Hey y'all, I'm in the car and I'm about to drive to the Nectary because I'm going there and I'm going to be installing a butterfly garden on site. I'm so excited. Um, she's, you know, providing all the plants because like it's her space, but I'm going to put in a garden and it'll be like a, a sample garden. So when people go shop at the Nectary, they can kind of see what a butterfly garden could look like. And of course you guys are coming along because I'm filming the whole thing. So I'll see you there. Okay, so I'm here. It's a little chilly. It's breezy. Um, it's going to be great. I'm so excited. So this area back here is the area we're planting out. And it's going to be awesome. So right now I'm gathering up some plants to put in. And I'll show you what I've collected and tell you the whys for why those plants are going in this garden space. Okay, so this is the area that I'm working with. You can already see I've got a privet senna for sure, and a wild lime for sure, and then uh, just some flowering plants here. Rudbeckia, a cut leaf cone flower, um, of course, red penta. And then these two containers here have uh, swamp milkweed seedlings. It looks like in a frog fruit that the seedlings are coming up. So we're just going to keep these containers and place them in the butterfly garden area. And then back over here in this wild area in the back corner of their um, lot, there's a bunch of salvias coming up. So I'm just going to dig some of those up and move them in. And that'll be fun because y'all know I have to dig up and move stuff we can't ever just put in all new stuff we have to use what we have right okay y'all so I'm gonna pause and do a little walkthrough of those plants that are in here and let you know what they're for who they're for and who they're going to attract First is this sweet little baby. This is a teeny tiny little privet sunna. Now the privet sunna will get pretty tall and it will get covered in yellow flowers and it will host a bunch of the sulfur butterflies. There's several varieties of sulfurs. I find it very hard to tell them apart and I understand that they crossbreed sometimes so sometimes they're a little bit of both but it's a beautiful plant it's really frilly and light but yet full and the flowers are gorgeous and come here I'm going to show you something. there just happens to be a caterpillar right here that's a sulfur caterpillar this is on a partridge pea but this is what will host on that privet senna also. And actually, I'm going to take this little guy home with me later. I'm so excited. And I'll be checking the plant to see if there's more. The next host plant that I'm adding is a wild lime. Wild limes are thorny little plants. Um, they do very well in a frost. Mine have survived and are thriving in my garden. And these are the host plant for the giant swallowtail butterfly. And the caterpillars are adorable. They look like bird poop. So um, that's always a fabulous addition to a butterfly garden. And then, of course, these adorable little teeny tiny swamp milkweeds, Asclepius incarnata. They are host to the monarch butterfly and they are a native variety of milkweed and they grow pretty fast but they do die back in like end of October, November and then they'll pop up again in the spring. And then hiding back here in the corner is a thistle. Not the prettiest plant in the world, huh? A lot of people are like, why? Well, it gets super cool flower on it that these can get like up to four feet tall and pollinators love it butterflies love it and it's also a host for the painted lady and i think a skipper i'll have to check um so it's going in here and actually i want to get one for my garden too and then right back here is little tiny maypop passion vine now this will grow up and it will totally fill up this whole fence and it will be so fabulous. Maypop Passion Vine is the host plant for the zebra long wing butterfly, Florida State butterfly, and the golf fritillary. 
So right now it doesn't look like a whole lot, but when these plants all grow in, it will be beautiful, especially the swamp milkweed when it gets up and running. And along the fence in the back, um, Catherine has found some really cool um, old window framing pieces that fit along the fence that will make a beautiful trellis for that maypot passion vine that I just showed you. And then I also added the cut leaf cone flower and some black eyed Susans for me and of course a penta which will get nice and big and full and some Coreopsis and then there we have the wild lime the salvias they're looking kind of unhappy but they'll be fine and the privet senna so now I'm going to water it all in and uh, it'll be good to go. We'll come back and we'll check on it and see how it's growing. All right, one final shot. I was able to go around the nursery and find enough bricks to frame in the back side. And the sun is just now coming around, so this will get good all afternoon sun. And we'll be back to see it. Hello, little butterfly garden. And the nectar is now closed for the day, so I'm here and I'm heading out. What a beautiful day. Y'all, I just got back in the car from planting the butterfly garden and there's just a monarch literally flying around outside the car. So I'm getting ready to head home and get this film edited and uploaded and I'm a little caterpillar. Look at this adorable little baby. Oh my goodness.